Welcome to Only a Podcast. Two blokes upside down and many miles from home talk about popular culture and unpopular culture too. Music, books, films, the news, what we had for dinner last night, anything goes. Apart from politics, probably. Episode 007, the James Bond special. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to episode 007 of Only a Podcast. As we said from the outset, episode 007 will be a James Bond special where we'll talk about a few Bond related topics. Uh, hello Captain, are you there? Hello, how yeah. are we doing? Yeah, all yeah. good, all good. So uh, yeah, I'm going to say from the outset, uh, there will be no spoilers in this episode of the, the newest film. Uh, what, what's it called? No Time to Die. Is that That's what it's called? One. Yeah, we um, won't have any spoilers because uh, you haven't seen it, have you? It's true. I'm saving it for the holidays um, for a rainy day. But, yeah, um, <laughs> summer in ab- New Zealand, yeah. It's absolutely hammering down at the moment. But, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I shall save that for um, for when we're not able to be outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we, uh, we will need to revisit that because it's quite monumental, this, the, the latest film. It's a monumental one. It is. Yeah. So, yeah, we want to, yeah. So we'll save that for, for the new year or whenever. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the format we're going to take, I think, is um, uh, my good friend Scott. Hello, Scott. Uh, we'll give you a name check in the, in the notes. <clears throat> Suggested a, a load of sort of best ofs. Uh, yeah. best things around Bond. So I think we'll just go down that list, shall we, and just discuss them. Let's so, do that, because so, it, uh, it made me go back and watch some of the, some of the earlier films, mm. um, being, um, as it's a long time since I've watched some of those things, yeah, especially the Connery ones. So uh, I've revisited several, um, and, uh, yeah, it was yeah. Um, an interesting thing, how my memories and the actual films <laughs> didn't didn't work out. Haven't, maybe haven't stood the all. test of time quite quite so no, much. Yeah, not so much. Yeah, I, I, mm. I didn't go back and watch any of the early ones. I have to say for this, but I have watched a couple of the newer ones because I I lost Bond years ago. I just was never really that interested. So uh, yeah, but um, yeah, it's uh, well, we'll come on to what we think. So should we? We'll just work down the list, shall we? Yeah, let's go. So go on, you you start. Okay, so um, the actual best Bond. I mean, who is the actual best Bond? Um, if you're talking about acting, it might even be Daniel Craig, to be honest. Um, I, I find him damn sight more believable than uh, in that kind of role hmm. than anyone who has gone before. Uh, however, that might um, that might upset lots of people, um, being as how that certain earlier actors are iconic. Um, yeah, I could say that uh, Pierce Brosnan and Timothy Dalton weren't my bonds at all. I think I said in the notes that um, mm. I kind of didn't even it didn't raise my you know didn't float my boat all those ones at the time. I, I just really couldn't get into it I, after Roger mm. had gone. Um, uh, there was a huge gap, and I guess Daniel Craig regenerated um, my interest in those kind of films. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. For him, yeah, I think you're you're spot on in what you're saying. I did see uh, Goldeneye a couple of times. Um, <laughs> there's a story with that. Uh, at the time, the Goldeneye film came out. Um, there was a uh, an associated video game. I think it was on the Nintendo 64. I think, if I remember rightly, and I became a bit mm. obsessed with this game. Uh, and uh, <laughs> simpler times. And one of the things you had to do, so it was like a first person, sh- you know, go around various rooms and buildings and shoot bad people. It was pretty much that um, first person shooter. But what you had to do uh, as kind of to succeed in the game, anytime you ever entered a room or entered any part of the game, there will be CCTV cameras and you had to shoot the cameras. First thing, otherwise you'd get nowhere in the game. So go in the room, look yeah. for the cameras, shoot the cameras and carry on. I became so obsessed with the game at the time that it got me in real life. <laughs> because I, 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 you know, I was working in London at the time. And there's CCTV cameras everywhere. 
and yeah. I'd be walking down Liverpool Street or somewhere, and I'd see a camera. And I'd, I'd go for my gun. I'd, my finger would oh, twitch, gosh. get a little thumb twitch. So yeah, I was a little bit obsessed oh, by by the video game. Uh, it was great, yeah. and I didn't see the film till afterwards, but I did enjoy the film. Uh, yeah, that was Brosnan, and I think Terry Hatcher was the the Bond girl in that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think you're dead right in what you're saying. Uh, best Bond. You could argue uh, that there's two, because I think you've got the old guard and the new guard, right? So um, you're right. I think Daniel Craig's superb. Um, maybe is it his acting or is it the storylines and, you know, the, the kind of 21st Good century point. nature of the films now? Um, but, I mean, I think James Bond, I think Sean Connery, personally. Um, but in terms of quality... Yeah, the the uh, Daniel Craig ones are are good. I've seen seen them all now. I think, and yeah, I think he wins. Cool. Yeah. yeah, cool. Mm. All right, uh, that's that one done. Yeah. Uh, so, what was the second on the list? Uh, best car. Uh, best. Yeah. Mm, tough one. Well, we um, we did uh, did give a, a massive hint on Instagram about what I thought about the car mm. um, with the Corgi model DB5, mm. which I did have when I was a kid, um, but it got all smashed up and stuff cool. um you know in these days i would have bought it and kept the box and not touched it at all <laughs> yeah. but don't even point you know don't even look at just, it yeah. <laughs> don't even look at it you know yeah. <laughs> but uh but in my younger days uh yeah the the little guy in the ejector seat was lost uh, yeah. quite, quite quickly yeah um you know so uh things things got broke so it didn't survive much um yeah. i would buy another one I, I might even i might even get one after this just to, <laughs> just to uh yeah just to get that back so I think uh, is it, it's hard to go past the original DB5 with the rotating number plates uh, and the machine guns and the eject yeah, seat and the, yeah, and the oil. Oil, and the, oil slick thing, yeah. Oh, everything. It had the lot. I am. Um, um, the, the, go on. Yeah, you know, the bulletproof screen at the back. Yep. And uh, an endless list of, of things, which, oh, which they have brought back, haven't they? Yeah, they at have. At various points in the mm. modern ones, mm. the, the car pops up again. Yep. Um, yeah, they're all optional yeah. extras now, though. You have to pay extra for those, but... Um, yeah, I had, uh, talking of uh, dinky toys or whatever it was, I had the uh, Lotus Elan, is it? I don't know what model of Lotus. The White Lotus. Elite. What, uh, Elite, like was that. it? Yeah, okay. Uh, with the... Yeah, from yeah. the Spy Who Loved Me, the one that converted to a submarine. Um, I had that. You push a little button and the fins came out and I think the uh, oh, the windscreen things went up or it's something great. like that. Yeah, good stuff. But, um, yeah, um, Daniel Craig's got some pretty tasty cars in the in the latest one. Um but yeah, it's just full, I mean the original ones are just full of them. I went back to some of those as well. I mean, in the first one, Doctor No, yeah, he, he, uh, Connery was blasting around in a Sunbeam Alpine. Yeah, that's right. Which, 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 uh, uh, yeah, obviously prompts, uh, prompted a few sales of that, of yeah, that particular yeah. vehicle. There's a DBS instead of the DB5, but it got to later. Yeah, um, but two other great things that I in my revisits, I, uh, a Tiffany cases. A Ford Mustang Mach One, where he does the um, go down the alleyway and on two wheels trick. Ah, uh, that was a great car. Mm. And in You Only Live Twice, when he's in Japan, um, they're in uh, a Toyota 2000 GT. Check that one out. That's a nice, lovely motor. Nice. Great, really nice. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think the but, winner, uh, the winner is the DB5, right? From Goldfinger uh, it has to and be Thunderbolt. That, really. Yeah, I think it's got to be. Yeah, that's a clear yeah. winner, clear winner there. Uh, as an aside, I was watching, I don't really watch it, but I happened to be watching Top Gear the other night and uh, they had this new Aston Martin. Uh, I can't remember the model. I don't know, it started with a V, I think. Um, and it was a limited edition uh, Aston Martin, limited to one. Oh. One off, four million pounds. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> four million pounds. Yeah. So I've put it on the Christmas list. We'll see how we go. I'll have two. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what colour? Okay. What colours do they come yeah. in? Yeah. <laughs> so okay, right. so that's a that's a point for Aston Martin DB5. Um, I think so. Best baddie. Oh. Um, or the, obviously there were the the uh, the big baddies like uh, Blofeld, etc. Scaramanga and so on. Various but, Blofelds, yeah. Yes, yeah. there were, and to this day there is still a Blofeld. Um, yeah. Uh, but I like some of the henchmen, actually. Odd Job was a, was a favourite of mine. Oh, yeah. With his, with his hat that he used to cut things, uh, cut heads yeah. off statues, and, and Jaws, of course, with the, with the teeth. Um, yeah. Yeah, but... There was, uh, there's the Baron Samdi in Live and Let Die, uh, the spooky voodoo 
chap. Oh, uh, yeah. Was no, yeah. His name was Jeffrey Holder. He was a pretty good sideman. Right. Of, uh, a, a better villain than, than Yafet Kotto, mm. who was Khan Anger in that, that film, maybe. Um, so he was pretty spooky. Yes. Uh, but, I, yeah, I, I, was, I think I said earlier um, that we uh, you need someone who kind of looks and sounds evil as well. Yeah, uh, I think. Um, uh, and, and also, um, maybe called Chris <laughs> yes, in, yes. in real life. Uh, Christopher Walker, Christopher Waltz, uh, Christopher Lee, who was obviously a great actor, yeah. uh, probably outacts Roger Moore in The Man with the Golden Gun, really. Mm, mm. Uh, and, and looks sufficiently evil, I think, to be to be a villain. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we could we could mention Donald Pleasance, who looks evil, but uh, has since been completely spoilt by um, Austin Powers. By Austin Powers, basically. <laughs> Doctor <So>, Evil. <laughs> Doctor Evil <laughs> slash Donald Pleasance. Uh, yeah, uh, but just a little too strange, I think uh, that one. Um, and, and some of the other ones, I think, suffer by uh, by association with other things. Yeah. Um, Telly Savalas. Um, <laughs> it's just Kojak for me. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. um, <laughs> but we're going back and watching the films again. Uh, you know, e. who loves your baby with a <laughs> with uh, lollipop? With, yeah. a, with a lollipop stuck in. <laughs> it's not particularly evil. Um, I, 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 the, the weird one we found. I, I told you about with Charles Gray um, being uh, being well, uh, felt in one film. But having been killed in, as a different character in a previous yeah. film, surely yeah. something wrong there, um, yeah. chaps. Doesn't seem quite um, right, does it? That's not that's a, the continuity there was uh, just a little flawed, let's mm. say. Yeah, yeah. but uh, is it is it going to be Goldfinger? Is he see the most? Uh, he certainly doesn't look very evil, but he's pretty evil. He's pretty evil, uh, and <laughs> again, Austin Powers, Gold Member. Um, yeah, I got, I got, that, got that spot on, didn't yeah. I? But yeah, uh, yeah, got Goldfinger's. Yeah, I mean it's well, it's the it's the film I think I know the best is Goldfinger. So a lot yeah. my, a lot of my things on this list come from Goldfinger, I think. But um, yeah, Goldfinger's cool. We like Goldfinger. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but we should maybe we should maybe at this point move on to the next the best line in the film because uh, yes. because he's got it. <laughs> yeah, of, of course. Yeah, so best quotes. Um, Okay, uh, well, yeah, I'll let you go first with that one then. I don't know if you have well, it word for word. It's the classic yep. Sean Connery is on, uh, is strapped to a table with a laser moving up between his legs yep. um, and uh, asks Goldfinger, do you expect me to talk? <laughs> no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Beautiful, beautiful. Which is fairly callous, yes. I, I think, yeah. as lines as lines go. But that's, again, that's an iconic quote, isn't it? And somehow Bond yeah. gets out of it and he doesn't die. Spoiler alert well, for, for Goldfinger. That's what happens. But it's why don't, as as as, uh, as Doctor Evil's son says in Austin Powers, why don't you just kill him? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just kill <laughs> just him. Just shoot him. Shoot him. Yeah, it would be much better. Yeah, but no, it um, never happens. F- uh, f- for me, the quote I, I went for my favourite quote was uh, Sean Connery's uh, in Goldfinger again. Uh, he's in uh, a situation with a young lady, and uh, a evil henchman comes in to, to kill him. And a, a fight ensues, and they have a bit of a rough and tumble. And this this baddie, I can't remember exactly who the baddie is, um, ends up being thrown into the bathtub full of water. So, oh, yeah. so, so Sean, uh, so Bond uh, just taps. Uh, I think it's an electric fan or electric heater or something into the yeah. bath, ele- thus electri- electrocuting the bad guy. And uh, he walks away, uh, simply saying, "Shocking." So, um, yeah, cool as just electrocuted a guy. Shocking. Uh, Excellent. No, there's no tidying up either, is there? No, <laughs> no, a lot of mess. Maybe there is. It's in secret. <laughs> there's, there's, um, a, there's a lot of mess. Um, yeah. Uh, what have we got here? Theme tunes. Let's go on to oh, theme tunes. Now, this, like now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just, do we have to get the Beatles klaxon out here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. I think we do. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how long, let's just see, see how long we've been recording before we mentioned the Beatles. 13 minutes, that's not bad. No, okay. um, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I think, uh, f- well, my two yeah. will be, and Come it's on. a dead heat, it's a dead heat uh, between Ooh. The Spy Who Loved Me, uh, Nobody Does It Better, Carly Simon, uh, and live and let okay. die, which, which was Paul McCartney and Wings, I think officially was it wing, Wings? Yeah, or, yeah. So um, I think of of all the modern ones, McCartney gets it in a way that quite a lot of the modern ones 
don't. Yes, uh, right. the, too many of the modern ones um, are just songs strapped onto the film, I think. Exactly. But there's a, there's yep. a pacing and a, and a sort of orchestration about, about Live and Let Die that just takes it a cut above for me, uh, certainly the modern themes. Yep. Um because he's got the he's got the brief, you know. He's been he's been, he's been asked to do something. Yeah, he's probably seen the film. He's looked at it, and he's and he's you know he he gets it all right, you know, pretty much. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yep. Um, but I think for me, I think for me, uh, I'm quite fond of the Shirley Bassey ones. Um, yes. And I was this was part of the another reason for listening to those again. Uh, I think I think the Goldfinger one. Okay, everybody knows that one. Uh, it's a little bit too overwrought. I think yep. she does throw everything into it as she does, obviously. But I, I quite like Diamonds Are Forever as as yes. a better theme tune than that. It's got the drama, and she does um, she does overplay it a tad. Mm. But uh, but it's a, it's a great thing, um, and I think that's my joint favourite with Live and Let Die. Um, I did find a list uh, on, I found, uh, just doing a bit of Googling, I found a list, it's on Esquire.com, and they've ranked their top 25 Bond themes, worst to best. Uh, Mm. The top two were, their their number one was Live and Let Die, and number two was Nobody Does It Better. So they had the same top two as me, actually, which was uh, interesting, and Goldfinger came in third on their list. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Billy Eilish, right. interestingly, was fourth on this list. Um, yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah, um, yeah so that's um, cool. that's all good. That's all good. Um, so speaking of theme music, I need to make a diversion to talk about the theme music, but maybe we'll come back to that at the end because um, cool. I've got some stuff to say on the theme music. Let's just finish this this best of list then, shall we? So yeah. uh, gadgets, best Bond wow. gadget. Oh, yeah. So many. There are just so many. So many. Um, for me, it's... It's the stuff that arrives from Q yeah. in a couple of carrier bags. Yeah. Or, you know, a couple of hold alls come in yep. and they unzip them and then, <laughs> and then build some thing. Yeah. Which some is stuff. obviously twice as big as it as could possibly fit in these bags. But yep. uh, I, I, I think my one is, is the. Is the um, the portable auto gyro in you only live twice, <laughs> which comes in in four hold alls, yeah, and they get them out, and, and everybody starts building these things, <laughs> yeah. um, which is also loaded with rockets and machine guns and all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah. Um, and he buzzes off in this this thing. Um, I, that has to be one of my favourites. Uh, uh, I think it's great how because it's yeah how Q. You know, Q um, gives him these gadgets at the start of the film, and, and they're always exactly just the gadgets that he needs. Yeah, it's funny. For that adventure. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. wasted. That's lucky. <laughs> lucky I brought that with me. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many gadgets. How do you choose the best one? I mean, uh, I like the ejector seat. I think that's very, very cool. Although that's yeah. technically part of the car, I suppose. But, um, yeah, an ejector seat's good. Uh, and there's some good ones in the, in the new film, actually, which I won't yeah. talk about. I did I did make a, make a sort of observation, really. I, I, I just had to think about this, but... Um, the gadgets these days, I don't know, seem, because of CGI and what you can do with things, yeah. it seems slightly less interesting to me. I, I, I don't mm. know. You know, before, you know, it's a man with a golden gun. Oh, look, it's, you know, it's a gun made from a cigarette lighter and a pen. And, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you put it all together and it kills people. That's right. Whereas now it's kind of like, oh, yeah, we're smart blood. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess, <laughs> you know, you can have that if you want. Yeah. You can have anything these days. Yeah, you can, yeah. Um, it's not that far fetched, so, is it? it yeah. You know, Q hasn't had to. Well, they've obviously worked on it fairly hard, but um, <laughs> it. it, it uh, I don't know. Does it seem kind of less of a thing, less interesting? I, I don't know. But um, anywho, uh, they'll always be part of it. And, uh, it's all pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah good, good. Um, cool. Uh, we've got. Uh, I think we're nearly through this list. Well, so. Uh, we've been jumping around it, haven't we? The best stunt. So you wrote oh. on our working document. Well, it's bloody obvious, isn't it? So I'll let you talk about that then. Well, no, nothing. Nothing beats, surely, the opening scene to The Spy Who Loved Me, yeah. where, 
He skis off a cliff. I'm glad you said that because I, I didn't. It wasn't obvious to me, but I thought well, it must be that one. So we agree on that one. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, there are, there are many. He's going to die. Um, He's going to die. He skied off a cliff. What's going to happen? Blunk. <laughs> and it was also an amazing technical achievement. Yeah. I heard some stunt, some stuntman <laughs> skiing off a massive, poor, poor, massive cliff and living. And poor you bastard know. got seventy quid for that. Yeah. There's no CGI. Yeah, it's no CGI in that. Well, here you go. You just skis in a parachute. Yeah. Off you go. Well, let's film it. And apparently, I, I read that there's only one camera mm. ended up getting it. Yeah. In the end, they set up obviously lots. Mm. And for some reason, whatever happened, it all went wrong. Mm. Except for one camera, they managed to just take the footage from one camera, um, and then the you know, well, it's not a spoiler, is it? When it's the film so old, no. And then the Union Jack, yeah, parachute, parachute. parachute. pops out, and everybody goes, "Way!" Yes, yeah. um, but it has to be that one. Uh, there are many. There are obviously many stunts. Yeah, um, for me, that's it. That's the one. Like you say, the, the modern ones are, are so. Uh bombastic aren't they you know so unbelievable some of the things that happens yeah. and he you know gets yeah. up at the end he hasn't even got a you know his shirt's not even yeah. dirty you know so yeah it, i mean it didn't really uh, the, some of the earlier films as well it didn't really stop them doing them again no that's um, right yeah. there's, there's an awful lot of skiing in order majesty secret service mm. so they obviously thought oh wait, wait a minute yeah. let's get some guys on skis chasing him down a hill yep. again yeah but how could we beat that oh well let's just have him go off a cliff yeah brilliant yep That'll do. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's great, crazy. Great stuff. Um, all right. I think that brings us on to the last question. Uh, oh, you added Best Bond Girl. Um, well, I did, because uh, that's mainly why I was revisiting things. And, uh, mm. and uh, I have a... I have a. I thought that in, uh, in the earlier films, um, Shirley Eaton, despite in, uh, meeting her demise painted in gold... Mm. Um, was a, a, a fairly spectacular Bond girl. It didn't last very long no. in that particular film. Um, uh, but uh, for me, uh, Jill St. John, I think, who's the, who goes around in that film in a bikini most of the time, Fair I would enough. say, yep. even on an oil rig. Yeah, well, why not? <laughs> She's wearing a bikini. <laughs> uh, She's wearing a bikini while she... Uh, badly shoots a machine gun while not looking and falls off the oil rig, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Um, that um, as a as a pretty sort of sprightly uh, foil to uh, to Bond in that particular film, I think she pretty much meets meets all requirements. Let's say yes. Um, uh, yeah. I'm thinking um, on a Blackman. Um, oh yeah. What was she? What was her role? Oh, she was Pussy, was she Pussy Galore? Galore, of course, was she? Indeed. Yeah. Of course, in Goldfinger. Yeah, it's, yeah. In Goldfinger. Most of mine come back to Goldfinger, That's I think, yeah. Pretty marvellous. Yeah. yeah. Um, Here we go. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say any more. I think that's that's the winner for me. Um, cool. Okay, so, overall best film. So it comes to the crunch. The crunch. Overall best film. The winner. Crikey. Uh, you're going to make me go first, are okay. I can go first if you like. Um, no, you go. go no. <laughs> uh, well, I, will, I will say that I watched... Because of uh, various, because uh, I couldn't remember if George Lazenby was as bad an actor as mm. all that. Mm. Uh, really not, you know. Yeah. Um, I watch it again, and he's not. And that is a tremendous plot, and pro- possibly the best ending of any Bond film. Although incredibly sad, um, and maybe what turns him into even more of a monster than he already is mm. when his. Uh, Bride is um, is killed mm. by Blofeld, Telly Savalas, yeah. um, and his female accomplice at the end of the film. And I thought that was a pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good plot in that film. The, the, the fight scenes are awful, I have to say. So that spoiled it a lot for me when I watched this. I thought this would be okay if they filmed these and edited them properly. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if it was because George Lazenby wasn't good at that kind of thing. I, I don't know and whether they rushed him into it, but. Uh, that spoiled that film. I was ready to. I was ready to like that film more than the press it gets. Um, but um, I don't know. Uh, it's. It, it, does it go back to Goldfinger again? Even well, um, uh, plot wise, it probably does. But but again, there's some pretty spiffing Roger Moore films. If you take it as a a Roger Moore film, mm. where Bond is kind of toned down and uh, there's more. I don't I'd love to say comedy, but um, it's certainly played more for uh, 
for smiles. Yeah, they, they camp it up um, a bit more, don't they? Yeah. You know, camp it up mm. a bit more family oriented, perhaps. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Um, I love the Roger ones. Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me has to be mm. the Roger Moore film. Yep. But go on, you, you're going to commit now, aren't you? You're going to commit to it because I'm not. Uh, well, I, 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 <laughs> I can't do it. It was a no brainer for me. I mean, I have to say, as I said at the start, I know Goldfinger better than any of the other films. I've seen them all over the years, but um, yeah. with the exception of a few of the sort of Dalton ones, I don't think I've seen. Um, but I, I wrote Goldfinger as my best Bond film, but I wrote that mm. before I saw the new one. Uh, and I won't say any more because we're not doing any sort of spoilers other than to say you should watch the new one uh, so I'll leave that there I think um, yeah so that's the list uh, the sort of little little questionnaire we got from from, uh, from my mate Scott so well done Scott uh, and we've got a few other bits and pieces we're going to talk about um, uh, yeah so you're going to do your yeah I was interested to talk about the uh I was interested to find out about the origins of the theme tune. So, you know, the yeah. little twangy guitar riff, dang, ding, 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 that one. Absolutely. That one. Well, I found out where that came from. So it was um, uh, Cubby Broccoli had worked with this guy called Monty Norman, who was a uh, composer for, um, for, for film and theatre and so on. He was commissioned to do the, uh, the theme for James Bond. Uh, which was first used in Doctor No. Uh, now, Monty Norman, who's still with us, incidentally, he's 93 now. He's still still, oh. still alive and kicking. Now, he had just finished um, a uh, doing the score for a film, um, uh, which was an adaptation of V.S. Naipaul's A House for Mr. Biswas. I don't know if you know, if you're aware of that. I don't know if I should know what that is, but no. I, I don't. But it's basically, it's a film. All I know is it's set... Uh, in the Indian uh, expat community in Trinidad. Yeah, so he'd done this um, this soundtrack for this film and uh, the, the original riff, if you like, was done on a, a sitar and it's very much Indian, what, yeah. what I would ignorantly call Indian music. Um, and it's got words and it's about this. And the song, it's called Born, uh, Good Sign, Bad Sign is the name of the song. So if you go to YouTube and look for Good Sign, Bad Sign, Monty Norman, you'll find it. And it's it's brilliant. <laughs> it's so brilliant. Um, so he just kind of lifted that. He took that piece of music. He thought that that could sound quite mysterious for a spy, a spy film. So he mm. used it. And uh, simple as that, really. So he didn't write it especially for James Bond. Um, but that's how it came about. And it's been used in every... Bond film um, in some form or another. You sometimes hear it as incidental music in the background when there's a scene going on or, or mm. vari- variations of it, of that, that kind of... That riff. I was born with this unlucky sneeze And what is worse, I came into the world the wrong way round uh, it was played by a, a session musician called Vic Flick, who you may have heard of, Excellent. Captain. You, what a great name. Yeah, Vic Flick. Um, played on a... Let's get Vic. A nine, get Vic in, yeah, Vic there. Um, <laughs> it's played on a 1939 Clifford Essex Paragon Deluxe guitar on a Fender Vibrolux Ooh. amp. Uh, wow. And he got paid a one-off fee of six pounds. So, nice work there. Six English pounds. Six quid. Good Lord. So, nice work there, Look how much that Vic. was. Uh, yeah, that was in, yes, yeah, so that was in 1962. Mm. That was, Not that a lot, was really. Not a lot of money. No, it's probably a day's work. No. Yeah, it's probably a fair fee for a day's work. Uh, he was a mm. session player. He played on a lot of records in the 60s. Uh, he was a member of George Martin's orchestra. Uh, he he was on the soundtrack of A Hard Day's Night, Beatles, Beatles oh, Claxon. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and he also played the list, it's a huge list, Nancy Sinatra, Dusty Springfield, Tom Jones, Cliff Richard, Paul McCartney, Engelbert, Humperdinck, Crikey. Lulu, Shirley Bassey, Burt Backrack, and so it goes on. So he's on lots and lots and lots of records throughout the 60s. So, yeah, an interesting backstory to where that um, theme tune came from. And it reminded me yeah. of another little musical fact that I'd heard with... Um, if you all know the uh, well, listeners in the UK will know a uh, TV game show called Blankety Blank, which was based on an American show called Celebrity Match or something like that it was called. Anyway, um, Blankety Blank, you all know the theme tune. Uh, now, there was a 
composer, band leader who worked at the BBC called Ronnie Hazelhurst. He did all that music back in the yeah. day on the BBC. Uh, he was commissioned to come up with a theme tune for this thing, Blankety Blank. Uh, and again, talking about re- reusing old uh, uh, disused material, if you like, now, there was a comedy show called Please Sir, which a lot of you will remember, yeah. and you, you'll all know the iconic theme tune to Please Sir. Well, what you don't hear, unless you go, go on to Spotify and listen to the whole full long version of Please Sir, there's a bridge or a, a middle eight or something uh, that you never heard on the TV show because it was towards the end. But it goes da 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 And uh, Ronnie Hazelhurst was like, oh, I'm having that. Uh, easy money. So he just took that and they put the words blankety blank to it and that's how the theme from blankety blank came along. So uh, there's a little fact for you there. An aside. An aside, mm. yeah. So well, um, yeah, so that, that's it. That was me, a little deep dive on uh, the theme music. Um, right. Yeah. 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 Any more for you to do? You, you had a thing about um, the, some of the names yeah, I think we, of some of the women. I think we have to approach, I think we have to approach the, uh, the, the me too-ness of, of, of Bond um, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's good that it's moved on. Um, Mm. At least a little bit. Uh, I, I did look at some of the earlier ones uh, with uh, slightly aghast in places because uh, I didn't remember it being quite that um, mm. is sadistic, the right word. In places, it probably is. Mm. Um, I'm glad they've drifted away from that. Um, the, 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 the smallest thing about it is the, the, the dodgy female protagonist names, um, which could have just as easily come from a carry-on film. Um, <laughs> and Austin yeah, Powers uh, played... continued that tradition as well, of course. With uh... Well, yeah, it was pretty easy for him to just think of more. <laughs> Ivana of because, Humpalot, uh, yeah. But it, it, would, it, would kind of make a, yeah, it would kind of make a good quiz. Was this original Bond <laughs> Real, or was yeah. it Austin Powers? Yeah, re- yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Plenty O'Toole and, uh, and Holly Goodhead yeah. and Molly Warm and Molly Warmflash. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I didn't even remember that one. Um, and... and and chew me, for goodness sake. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, lads. Yeah. It's just not right. It's not on, is it? Um, it makes Honey Rider and Pussy Galore seem quite tame, by comparison yeah. to some of those things. So I'm glad they, they, they got rid of that. But they kind of spoiled it a little bit. Uh, you know, they brought Judy Dench in as, as M. Yep. And that's obviously the – you know, castigates um, um, Daniel Craig – Several times about his uh, behaviour, yep. um, but they kind of blew that because they've they um, well, definitely a spoiler alert. But everybody's seen this bit, haven't they? Uh, she's not. She, well, I should put it this way: she's not M in the new film. Mm. Um, so you know they've gone back to a chap again. Mm. Uh, who's, who was was very good, Ray Fiennes, but um, uh, uh, yeah, is is the uh, is the pushback against. Um, yeah, that's true. That, those kind of attitudes um, uh, are muted somewhat now that Judy Dench is not around in the, in the film. I, I do think the... Uh, I mean, there's always been... Uh, well, maybe not always, but there have been over the years strong female characters insofar as, you know, women that help Bond, so they're on his side kind of thing. But he always ends up in yeah. bed with them, doesn't he, in the old days. I think nowadays it, yeah. it, they're more... They, they are really there and they're kind of saving his skin most of the time. While he yeah. while he's off, uh, you know, showboating, yeah. and they're just taking care of the job. So, um, yeah, it's going in the right direction. Yeah. It's going in the right direction, but um, yeah, yeah, it's. Um, no, it's. I guess we could. Uh, I don't know if I have any thoughts about um, where it would go from here. Um, we know that Mister Craig is not going to do it anymore mm. because he said as much. Um, Although he had said that before. Yeah. <laughs> they, before he came back for this That's why right, they think. just dangled a, uh, a Gregory in front of him. Here you go, here you go, Danny. How much, yeah. how much do you want? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so um, you know what? Um, uh, well, I don't know. If this may be spoilers. You've seen it. I haven't. But um, mm. uh, there, are, there are ways that they have to go. Yeah. Um, um, uh, they've had a female Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, well, they have a fully female 007. I believe there is um, a whiff of that going on mm. at the moment. But. Uh, you know, would they fully opt for uh, giving someone that role through a series of films? Will that ever happen in future? Mm. I'm not really sure. Mm. Um, 
certainly certain Tory MP whose name I can't remember oh, yeah. complained about yeah. complained about um, Jodie Whittaker yep. being Doctor Who yep. at spoiling the the masculinity that's of right. a generation yep, of teenage it. boys yeah. would be distraught if if, if an actual <laughs> female 007 continued for more than uh, a couple of minutes yeah, no, so, not possible um, surely not oh, yeah I don't know yeah of course, get, get, get that nearest one watched Put that on your I put shall. that on your list for Christmas. Um, you you, yeah. you won't regret it. It's it's Boxing a it's a long one. Yeah, exactly. Thing. It's it's a long one, yeah. but it's no um, it's no Beatles documentaries. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. How long cool. we got? Well, I think we've we're, we're almost there, aren't we? Um, I think we are pretty much. I've got, um, I've got a fact for you or a question should. for you. How many actors oh, do you yeah. reckon have played James Bond? Ooh. Uh, this is always one less than you think, because you miss out David Niven. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I'll help you along. It's many more than you think, because I can imagine it is because they're also yeah. radio productions. Oh, I can. yeah, you've got me. Yeah. So yeah. Well, this tw- so is, is twelve. It's, is it's it twelve really? actors. Well, um, right. all, all the ones that you know about, of course. Um, mm. Christopher Kazanov uh, oh. was in there. Bob Holness off of Blockbusters. What? Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. He played him in a radio production, uh, wow. and an interesting one is uh, an actor called Toby Stevens, who you'd know his face. He was yeah. in Die Another Day, and he played Baddie mm-hmm. Gustav Graves in Die Another Day. Um, well, he has played Bond, so this is a bit of a crossover here uh, in the yeah. BBC radio versions of. Uh, Doctor No, Goldfinger, From Russia With Love, Her Majesty's Secret Service, Diamonds Are Forever, Thunderbolt, Moonraker, Live and Let Die, and Man wow. With a Golden Gun. So you he could is the say Bond. he yeah. is the he has played Bond more times than anyone else. You could say, yeah, uh, yeah, t- wow. uh, Toby Stevens. So a uh, little trivia f- fact for you sure. there. Uh, yeah, twenty-seven movies in fifty-nine years. Not bad, eh? Mm. Yeah. yeah, good, good. Yeah. All right, good box set. It's, oh, is it, I haven't got the box set. Have you got the box set? No. no that'd be a hell of a box set, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a question yeah. for a future episode. What's the biggest box set you can buy? I think it wow. might be only Fools and Horses. Remember that one? Yeah. Mm. I think it might be. Mm. Okay, there's a question for the fans. What's the biggest box biggest box set you can find? Let us know how many, the most number of discs in a box yeah. set. Uh, it'll probably be the Beatles get back when it comes out. <laughs> the, cut, the, time, the cut scenes. Yeah. yeah. There won't yeah, there won't be enough acrylic in the world to make those DVDs, I tell you, if, uh, if Jackson gets going. No. Yeah, they won't be done before we're, we've shuffled off this mortal coil anyway. So, no. yeah. Right, I reckon we're done, don't you? Yeah, I reckon we're okay. done. Okay, uh, we'll call it a day. Is this... Which is the last one before Christmas? Uh, the, the, is. Uh, the plan is to get this one out before Christmas. Uh, I'm Ooh. off on my holobobs and I'm not back until the 21st. So I don't think I'll be doing this on my holidays. So I will aim to get no. this out on the 21st or 22nd if I can. Right, we're, we're out of here then. Thanks for listening this year. We've had really a lot of fun doing this. Uh, we've only, we're yeah, only about... It's been it has. It's been really something fun to do. Uh, this is only episode seven. There's lots more to come next year. Uh, I suspect we'll be holding an AGM in the new year just to plan what we're going to do. I reckon we might uh, yeah. go onto YouTube maybe next year. Uh, yeah, just we could do that. Add some, well, add some visuals we'll in. On, I don't think you'll want to see our, on, our ugly mugs, but um, we can drop some vis- yeah, visuals yeah. in of uh, stuff we're talking about. So we, we might just do that next year. And um, Then we're going to be on Google Podcasts. As well, we, I don't know if anybody uses that, but um, nobody does. We've got to be on it anyway. But it'll be easier to find because um, uh, currently we can't be the, yes. the podcast can't be searched on Google, but um, but, oh. uh, but it will. Yeah, it, but good. the website can anyway. So uh, yes, yeah, so sure. that's going to happen. So uh, yep, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year, or um, yeah, Merry Kitty Himeti. Yeah, Kitty him Yeah, yes, and uh, that stuff. Do uh, drop us a line with any feedback, any ideas at Only a Podcast on Twitter and Instagram facebook.com forward slash only a podcast only a podcast.com and email hello at only a podcast.com you get the idea um yeah yeah all right see you later everyone see you on the other side cheers folks cheers. see you later you've been listening to only a podcast if you'd like to get in touch and share your feedback and ideas we'd love to hear from you go to only a podcast.com 
or you can find us at Only A Podcast on Twitter and Instagram or via our Facebook page. Remember, it's Only A Podcast. Podcast.